Welcome back everyone, I am Dylan, this is my cousin Carlo, this is All You Can Board, and this is our top 50 games of all time for 2022, and this is 40 to 31. Uh, we're continuing, if you haven't watched our last video and you didn't know it was out, go check that out. I'll have the link up above somewhere right now so you can go check it out from 50 to 41. This is 40 to 31, and I'm going to throw it to you to give us number 40 and kick us off. Okay. Yeah, and if you have any questions about how we put together a list of games, whatever context about the list, that'll Keep be them to in the yourself because we're not going to answer them. Yeah, and then it's in the first <laughs> video, so go back and watch that. Uh, all right, so my number 40 game has dropped 12 spots from last year's list. It used to be at 28. I haven't played it in the last year, and it's a game I already uh, got rid of my copy of. That is Galaxy Trucker. So when I got rid of my copy uh, and I did a curating my collection video, I talked about why it was leaving my collection at the time. Uh, part of it was that it was just a bit, it usually took a lot longer than I wanted and the rules were a bit heavier than I'd like, so to teach new players and then people never really had an ideal first play of the game kind of thing. And they were releasing a new uh, kind of second edition version this past year and I thought, oh, maybe I'll rebuy it someday. So I haven't rebought it yet, I, but I have felt the itch coming back to play it again. I do think it's going to be a game that goes back into my collection um, because there isn't a whole lot like it out there. It's basically plays over three rounds and it's a real-time game where uh, that each round has two phases. The first phase is you're basically uh, in real-time picking tiles that are face down in the center and adding them to your little player mat to put together a spaceship and then in the second phase uh, you're all running your space or flying your spaceships through space on these adventures and revealing cards from a deck that determine what happens. You might run into space pirates that attack you. You might land on planets that have resources that you can claim for points. There's all kinds of cool stuff. Meteors are going to hit your ships. Your ships are going to blow up and every round your uh, spaceship board is bigger so it's a bigger ship that you have to build and there's more adventure cards so it's like it has this increasing arc really really fun game uh, just it's always a blast to play I love that in the rules it even says as long as you end with one point or more you win and it says like yeah so what who cares if some bozos made more money than you like we all made money so it's a game that people tend to always have fun no matter how bad or how well you do uh, you just kind of embrace the randomness so like maybe your ship's gonna get absolutely destroyed in space but who cares uh, really, really fun game and one that I'll probably want to play again and again, like I said, probably buy my own copy. Um, but we also did try a prototype copy recently, a fit to print, which reminded me a lot. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to wait to get fit to print and then compare. And I don't know if I'll end up wanting both in my collection because they're very... Maybe not very similar, but quite similar. Yeah. Fit to print so. is so good. Yeah. This isn't, this isn't, we're not going to talk about it. No, 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 yeah. but, but it's but, very good. But yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Galaxy Trucker, if you haven't played it, I highly recommend It's a game I think everyone should at least try once because um, I think there's a lot of people who might not expect to like it who will. Um, but it is probably also a try before you buy because there's a lot of people who just won't be down with that kind yeah. of game. But yeah, Galaxy Trucker. Nice. I'm surprised this is on here as a real-time game and not Magic Maze. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I have a lot to say about Magic Maze. But <laughs> I've only played Galaxy Trucker No, but once. ever since you made that Magic Maze comment in that one video, we've had some people yes. commenting on it. So it's going to be the ongoing yeah. joke for all you can board. Well, I'm going to start making that comment about you with me. Quacks now that we found out it's not <laughs> <laughs> but it'll, This will be our, our April Fool's video for the years we've yeah. to with Magic Maze now. Um, I've only played Galaxy Trucker once. Um, I enjoyed it, but it's been way too long since I played it. I'd have to play it again to yeah. even remember yeah. like how I enjoy it. Fair enough. Well, we know people who have it, so we can yeah. probably try it again soon. Number 40 for me, new to the list, awesome two-player game that I think will climb the more I play it, honestly, and that is think, Caesar yeah. Sees Rome in 20 I Minutes. Guess, I, figured, yeah. uh, I knew this was going to make it unless I didn't. I, I, for a while, I thought it could actually even be higher, but it was just like stiff competition. It's just such a good game. Honestly, I think if I played it even more than this, it would have been higher. It's, it's just a really interesting uh, battle for territory where... The, tile, the tiles that you place are giving one strength value to one territory and one strength value to another one. Often it's like you're gonna give a lower strength value to one compared to the other, so you're, you're not always sacrificing a territory, but you're like, you know, vying for one a little bit less than the other one you're, you're going to, unless you have like a three on either side, whatever. But you're placing these tiles in order to claim a territory. If you're the last one to place a tile around that territory, you get the bonus token that's on it. But if you have, if you have the highest strength value, you win the territory and get to place one of your player tokens. And whoever gets all their player tokens uh, removed first wins. So you're trying to expedite how quick you're putting these tokens out. But the best part of the game where it really starts to ramp up is if you claim a territory next to one you already have, you get to put an extra token of yours out. So that's that. now you have to start blocking other players from getting too many chains together. And then there's also the power tokens also can expedite things and give you other ways to integrate with the board. It comes with expansions in the box. It's it's honestly such a great little two-player game to play so quick that I think, honestly, every time we play, we're going to play a best two out of three. Like, I yeah. just, I think yeah. we'll rarely just do one because of how quick it plays and because it, it is so much fun. Like, it's not one you've seen enough of after just one little, like, 
like exactly. 15, 20 minute game, right? Yeah. So No, a highly replayable. I can't wait yeah. to revisit this. Not, not many games squeeze this much game into 20 minutes. Like yeah. it's really tough to find games that feel this yeah, satisfying in a 20 minute span. Yeah, it's awesome. It's 40 this year, but like I said, I think the more I play it, um, and as long as I continue to play it and get it to the table with other people as well, I think it's probably gonna climb because it is one of my favorite two player games now. Nice. Yeah, honestly, when I did my rankings, this was like around, I think some were like 57, 58 mm -hmm. for me. So it was definitely in contention for my top 50 this year. And uh, yeah, who knows, could make it in the future. One of the better two player only games around, I think, especially in terms of releases from the last few years, really solid game. Yeah. All right, number 39 for me is a game that I felt weird about this one because it has actually gone up eight spots and it's a game that I don't think necessarily has even improved in my standing. I had already played it many times before we did the list last year when it made it at number 47. Yep. Um, but this is Ink and Gold, otherwise known yeah. as Diamant. Yeah, yeah. And I think what has put it this high or kept it, like even though there's other games that have moved ahead of it and kind of thing, it has still moved up ahead of other games because it has still been, like, we've played it quite a bit in the past year. It doesn't matter whether I'm playing it in person or on Board Game Arena, uh, or <laughs> Arena, Board Game Arena. Um, any player count from three to eight players. Uh, oh, I guess I don't. we don't really ever play it with, like, three or four, I don't think. We usually play it with more. Yeah. Um, but what a fun little push-your-luck game. It's so quick. It's so easy to teach. And, again, like... If I think about the, you know, most uh, like seasoned sort of hardcore gamers that I play games with to the, you know, least experienced people I play games with, every single person like has a blast playing this game every time. Plays over five rounds, you're playing simultaneously, and that's a big factor for it too, is the no downtime basically. You just reveal cards from a deck, they're either gonna reveal jewels or artifacts, which are obviously good, or they're gonna reveal one of these five hazard types. Each of the five hazards, there's I think three copies of in the deck. So you're basically going through this deck, you reveal a card, and then everyone chooses if they're gonna stay in the temple and explore more, or if they're gonna uh, cut their losses and take what they sort of what's available so far and leave. The more people that leave in the same round, they have to divide what was up for grabs. So you're trying to leave when you don't think other people are leaving. Um, and if you fall behind, you can keep pushing and pushing. You can end up being the only person left in this temple, just turning over cards, trying to get jewels. So a lot of fun stuff. This is a game that I have very often ended the game with zero points because I get really greedy in push your luck games, and especially when I fall behind, I just get more and more uh, like risky with it, and I, I love that aspect. I love that you can have zero points going into the final round and still win, um, and I still have a blast whether I get zero points or you know 50, 60, whatever. Uh, really, really fun game. One of my favorite Push Your Luck games. Not quite my favorite, but uh, yeah, excellent game that continues to stand the test of time, and um, yeah, I don't think it's ever gonna leave my collection. This is one that, like, I think it, it ended up in like 60 to 70 uh, for me, and I think it was kind of the same thing last year. I really enjoy it. I always have fun playing it, but it's not one that, and it's the same thing with, all, I guess this is a spoiler, but it can't stop, same thing, like it's also not on my list. Mm. And both are just push luck games that I play, have played so much of, really enjoy, have a lot of fun, but they just don't, it, I could have the best session with it and it's still not my t a top 50 game for me mm. because it's just one that like I, it's almost that thing of like, I know it's not an activity, it is a game, but it almost just feels like what I'm enjoying so much about it is like the laughs and everything around the table than I am so much at the game that we're playing. Like, mm. a, a, for me personally, like I still would always, I still do want to keep coming back to it and playing it a whole bunch. It's just not like, it doesn't compare well when it comes to other games in my collection. I always would rather play something else, even in the party atmosphere, for than, sure. than it. But and like, I totally agree with you yeah. on that. That's not going to be one of my top choices. Yeah. Um, I guess it's just the consistency and reliability of it yeah. for me, coupled with the fact that like I saw everything there was to see in Ink and Gold like 20 plays ago, mm -hmm. and I still am like eager to play it when people suggest it. I'm like, yeah, this is going to be fun, and it plays yeah. quick. So. Yeah. yeah, no, for but sure. Great. I don't, know if it's, I don't know if it'll always be on my top 50, but uh, yeah. yeah, this past year it got played quite a bit. That was a big factor for it. But yeah, Ink and Gold at number, what was that? 39. 39. So 38, or 39 for me, I should say, uh, fell seven spots from 32 last year, and I think you're gonna be upset that this one is not only not higher, but also has fallen from last year, and that is Arboretum. Uh, wow. Yeah, so I still really love Arboretum, but I, I don't think I played it at all this last year, and... Yeah, define love. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, top 50 is a I'm, love. I've been just messing with you. Um, no, Arboretum... You don't have to justify. Ar Arboretum is great. It just... I, I, I Actually, I think we did play it once, now that I think of it. I think we did play it once at your place before you moved um, in, in this year. And I, and I still really, really enjoy it. It's just... I, I would have to play consistently at four for me, like... I, for me, I think, or a three, I, I like it at three as well, but 
like at those higher player counts, play consistently for me to like really get that bug again and remember mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. the the magic of it. That's because I, it, it's just how, it's hard to compete with a lot of other games on my list that I, I just really love as well, and, and more so than Arboretum that I've played more recently and have more more, more memories of. So this one might be another one that slingshots a little bit. Um, it's one of those games that for sure is not going to leave my collection because of the small size and because of the fact yeah. that I can always bank on it being a good experience. Mm -hmm. I, like, I've never had a bad session of Arboretum except when I played it with two the one time. Um, so I, I, again, it's, it's, it's always gonna uh, be successful. It's always gonna be a game I wanna play, but it just, yeah, it slipped a little bit and I'm, I'm almost glad it didn't slip more than this because I'm not having played a game and it's possible for it to slip more, but the fact that it only slipped seven despite I didn't play it should mm -hmm. be a testament to how good of a game it is. Like I think it's always gonna be in this range probably of the 30 to 40, right. unless I have a bunch of good sessions, play it a whole bunch, when we get back into playing it a bunch, maybe it can push, you know, get into the 20s or something yeah, like that. Yeah, and here's the thing, I'll say it has a similar issue as Azul where the scoring and even the way you lay your tableau can be confusing for yeah. new players. So. I think anyone I've showed it to has never had the ideal first play, and there's always a point where they're like, oh, you can do that with your cards? Yeah. Like, oh, that's how <laughs> yeah. it works? And then, yeah. so it's like, you really want to play this game with people who have played it at least a couple times and have fully internalized the rules, and that's where the game really sings. So, yeah, uh, yeah glad to see that it hasn't completely fallen off your list, but I, I know even when we've gotten together, like, I don't often suggest it either because sometimes it also takes longer than I'd like, but yeah. anyway, I'll leave it at that. I'm going to have more to say about Arboretum. In, in what song video. does it sing? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> think, think on that. Yeah, tell, tell me when you get to your pick. <laughs> yeah, a long time thinking about that. All right, yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, that was your number, what, 39? Right? 39, yeah. yeah. Okay, so my number 38. This has moved up four spots from last year. It was previously at number 42, and that is Patchwork. And I think, I can't remember if last year when we did the top uh, 50, if that was right after or right before we realized that we had been playing Patchwork wrong for like, right. since we learned it basically. <laughs> um, and that, if you want to know about the wrong rule thing, just go read the highest rated uh, or thread uh, on the Board Game Geek forums for Patchwork. It's, there's a rules error that was, like we interpret it the way it was written in the rules, so yeah. it's not our fault, but it was just kind of like a typo. But uh, anyways, amazing little two player only, uh, really tight, um, kind of tug of war feel with um, basically laying tiles uh, that represent little patches of fabric on your little uh, quilt, which is a square, I think, nine by nine board. Uh, what I love about this game, and I've mentioned this before, is the three aspects of time versus space versus your economy of buttons. And basically, your economy of buttons, how many you have in your supply currently and how many are on your board is basically going to determine, you know, what size of tiles you want to take and how much time you want to spend the, with the time indicator that's on those tiles. And that whole puzzle, like, there's never a point in the game where you feel that that is solved or that you have to stop thinking about that. It's like every decision is like, well, if I do that, then I'm going to run out of buttons, then I won't be able to afford anything, and then my opponent will do, like, there's a lot of that kind of trying to figure out you know, what the other player is gonna do and not do. And I just feel like since um, we sort of realized that we were playing it wrong and we had, I think there was a patchwork tournament in our Discord that, uh, shout I was out gonna, to- I was gonna bring that up. Yeah, shout yeah. out to Ted who's been just killing it running tournaments for us. Uh, if you wanna get in on some AYCB tournaments with us on Board Game Arena, go join the Discord. Um, but yeah, that kind of, improved it in my standing as well. I think I got to play it against some pretty good players. Yeah. Um, I didn't get too, too far in the tournament. I think, I think you made it to the final, didn't you? I did, I yeah, lost in the final. Yeah, I lost in the final. But I think playing it against some higher level players is where it clicked for me that I was like, I don't think I've been playing Patrick optimally before, and it kind of improved it in my standing a little oh, bit. Oh, so wait, so. So, I, I already forgot. Did it drop or? No, it went up. It, went up. it was 42 okay. last year, 38, yeah. so it went so, up four spots. So Patrick went up for me I, also because of learning the, the, yeah. the, the error in the rules, and specifically because of how much I played during that tournament, how much fun I had during that yeah. tournament. So I will have more to say about it later, but it's funny that it climbed for both of us, even though we had already played it often and Yeah, we had it in our collection just for having years. that yeah. rule change, we're like, okay, this is a way better yeah, game. Yeah, totally, yeah. <laughs> and it's one that I could see potentially going higher in the future. It might yeah. slip a little bit, but like, I've played it enough times now that it's pretty firmly entrenched in my top 50 for a, a while, I think. Yeah, yeah. patchwork, you really can't go wrong. And even if you if you haven't played it, even if you're not like interested in quilting, the theme doesn't grab you, like neither was I, but it's just a really good game. If, if that theme doesn't interest you and you can overlook it, I think you'll be quite surprised with how much game there is there. Yeah, for sure. Uh, number 38 for me was 33 last year. It's dropped five spots. Uh, still a great game, and that is Wingspan. Uh, mm. I really like Wingspan. It's, it's. I mean, it's what out of all 
out of a lot of the games on my list, it's one of the ones that is just the most beautiful when it's on the table. Like it, it is so attractive and it's hard to deny what it's done for the hobby and bringing people into it. And I understand why, because not only is it a beautiful game, the, the, uh, the actual gameplay itself and the fact that you it can expand it so much now with all these expansions and different birds and everything you're adding in, trying to chain these different you know abilities in your tableau and the way that they trigger from right to left in the way that uh, they are al um, aligned and some of the birds can move between ecosystems so you can adjust that as you go uh, and then laying down all, laying all these eggs and using them as a resource or the eggs are worth points or whatever yeah. there's things that I, like uh, still about it that you know I are my not my favorite part like I, I think that the sliding of cards underneath other birds or whatever is a neat mechanic, but the execution of it is like a little bit fiddly and not like as elegant as the mm. game package itself. Yep. Like the idea of it, like the eggs are, but then just being like, yeah, slide some cards into the other cards. Like it's like the one aspect of the game that I'm like, it almost doesn't fit like how beautiful the game is just start sliding cards right, under, right. whereas the eggs do, right? But that being said, like that, those are minimal complaints. Like it's a game that I can always rely on bringing out. I've had people request it. I've had people I just met for like the first time look at my collection and I'm saying like, here's the ones I recommend. They're like, you have Wingspan, let's play Wingspan. I'm like, yeah. oh, I didn't, that's, I thought that would be a little bit more complex since you don't play a lot of board games. Like, well, I've played Wingspan though. And it's so, it's just like, it's a, it's a game I can always rely on now um, to kind of be that gateway game. And I have so much fun with it every time I play, even when I haven't gone back to it a bunch. And I played it three times this year with the same person after not having played it a lot. Mm. And it reminded me, man, Wingspan actually is so much fun. And like, I might not be the one to recommend it, but I, I can never say no when someone else does because it's always going to be a good session. So. Yeah. It's yeah. a great game. When we did our top 50 last, and it's, it's not on my top 50 this year, and it wasn't last year. When we did it last year, I had only played it once, and I've played it quite a few times on Board Game Arena in the past while. We're in the middle of a tournament right now, and I've come to appreciate it a bit more. I think I didn't like, at first, the whole um, the end round scoring goals. Mm -hmm. um, that I wasn't a fan of, right. but I think what has kind of won me over a little bit and made me really enjoy playing it now on Board Game Arena is... The beginning of the game is my favorite decision, where you have the however five what is it five bird cards, yeah. and you have to choose which ones to keep and which food to get. The resource that there. is such an interesting decision, and I think the first however many times I played it, I was doing poorly because I was keeping too many birds. <laughs> and that tough decision of being like, I'm only going to keep one or maybe two birds, but like that can totally determine your game and how quickly your engine gets going. And yeah. I've seen people win in different ways, even though people complain about like the mass egg strategy at the end. I haven't really found that to be a huge problem. So yeah. I don't know. I, I find it's a game that gets a bit un fairly dismissed by some of the so to speak like hardcore gamers because they're like oh it's entry level game oh it's Stonemaier you know it's production quality only it doesn't belong where it is like I think people are too harsh on it um, and I think, I think it is that, a really solid game and I not to go on a tangent but I think that it's almost like any game that is viewed as a gateway game that has a that also has a theme that isn't like super what you'd expect from like you know the original yeah, tabletop like Dungeons yeah. and Dragons all that kind of stuff I think yeah. it just it has that gatekeeper Magnet. Totally. Yep. <laughs> it's almost what it ends up being. Yeah, very well said. Uh, which, which I think, like, in general, we've always tried to advocate for, even if I don't like a game or even if I think, like, it's bad, if it's bringing people into the hobby, I, I should be advocating for Even if I hated Wingspan, I should be advocating for its existence if it's bringing people into the hobby, right? 100%. Because the more people we have in our hobby, the more mainstream it is. And maybe mainstream is bad in some people's eyes, but for a niche hobby, you're never going to become, it's never going to become as big as video games are as an industry. But the bigger we get, the more money behind games, the more that it's easier. People don't always have to go to Kickstarter and stuff. Oh, it, there's just a yeah, lot of good yeah. reasons for bringing people into the hobby and Wingspan is doing that so yeah and it's yeah, yeah it's important to uh, yeah you have to be able to see through the hype but you also have to be able to see through it in the other way where like don't be overly critical on a game just because you don't like how much attention yeah. it got right so yeah, totally anyway Wingspan right well, that was Wingspan, your yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sorry say it say it Wingspan number go. 37 eight eight yeah <laughs> Number 37 for me is new to the list, a game that I was very close to having on my top 50 last okay, year, but la it. yeah, last year, but it had, when we did our top 50, I had only played it once and it had been like at least six months before we put oh, together wow, okay. our list. So, um, but I bought my own copy recently. I've played it, I think three times solo now. Um, and so now it is on the list. I know that is. is Holler Tower. Yeah, I knew it. Yeah. I thought it was going to be higher, actually. Okay. Yeah. No, honestly, it, it, it might climb higher, but I think I need to try it again, again, because in the past year and a half, I've only played it solo. I need to try it again with at least two or three players before I know if it's going to climb higher in my sort of list of Uwe Rosenberg games. That's but um, I guess I, you know, the video, by the time we're filming this, it's not up yet, I don't think. But I did just kind of talk about this in detail in my uh, 2021 tier list and rankings video. So if you want to know more about uh, how I feel about Holler Tal, you can go check that out. But the long and short of it is it's a farming game uh, about the region in Germany that produces the most hops in the world. Um, and it's got, it's, it's a little, it's not quite as like sandbox 
sexy as games like Caverna or Feast for Odin, but it's also not as punishing and tight as stuff like Agricola or Nusfjord. It kind of sits in that middle range somewhere. Um, it's a bit longer than games like Glass Road and Nusfjord, but definitely shorter than stuff like Agricola and a Feast for Odin. So it's in this like sort of between the medium and heavy Uwe Rosenberg games, I would say. But it finds a really nice sweet spot and it does a lot of unique things with uh, cards, which is by far my favorite aspect of the game. Just like so many combos, you play so many cards, they determine so much of what you're doing. I just, you'll see higher up on the list, like some of my favorite games of all time are very focused on cards. Yeah. Um, lots of interesting cards and big decks and stuff like that. So um, yeah, and then the worker placement's interesting. Uwe Rosenberg did sheep differently in this compared to other games. Like I'm just impressed with how many things he did differently. The fallow fields, the resource board that you track them where you don't have to have tons of pieces all piled up. Just really, really smart, well done game and one that I hope to play many more times. Yep, I'll, have, I'll talk about this later on because it is on my list again. Um, but I do really, really want to make a point of, or we both should, of like suggesting this and playing this more. Yeah. Because we have a lot of games, we have a lot of new games, a lot of great games to get through. And so it kind of, I ne almost never even think to suggest it. And then I remember I'm like, I haven't played it that many times at four. Yeah. Like, I played once at four and I think like two times at three or something. And then the, the other times were just with you. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if I have played it before. Um, and it's just, it's a game that I have enjoyed every time and I want to explore a bunch more. And for some reason, we, it just never gets to the table. So yeah. yeah, we should definitely make a point of playing this one. Yeah, maybe 2023, uh, 2023 will be the year of Uwe because we've I have Lavra, I have Aura Labor. We have all these big box Uwe games that we've got to start playing for the first time. We're digging into more. So maybe we'll just make a point to play a bunch of Uwe games this year. I like it. Yeah, that's Holler Town number 37, uh, new to the list for me this year. Number 37 for me fell one spot from 36, so essentially kind of the mm. same the same little niche, and that is Zolkin, the Mayan Calendar. Yeah, um, okay. Zolkin is a really, really great game. If I had played him, I played it once, and I think it was on, oh no, I did play it, I, I guess I played it twice. I played the physical version, and I played it on Board Game Arena this year. Um, if I had played it more, and if I played this more consistently, I honestly think there's a decent chance that Zolkin could be like even in my 20 to 30 range. Mm -hmm. I love this game. It's just the only part of Zulkin, and I can't even really describe why this is, I'd have to play it more to really try to understand, is I, I'm way more enamored with Zulkin in the first third of the game and the last third of the game than I am in the second, the middle of the game. Hmm. I find there's a part in the middle of the game where it's not that it's on, that it's kind of just playing itself, but it's there's less urgency and everyone's kind of st like starting to formulate the strategy and it, it, it seems like everyone's doing their own thing. And then at the end of the game, when you're starting to really care about the score and you're like, how much am I gonna accomplish because this game, the dial's getting closer. You're using your crystal skulls to get on that one track for the big point yeah. grabs and so stuff. So that's yeah. super interesting. And the beginning's always interesting because there's always just like starting to use the gears starting again. Tiles, yeah. yeah, and the gears are always super interesting. So like, it's just that middle portion that sags a little bit for me, but mm. it's, it's honestly so much fun. And there's so much to consider of like, not only like, which actions to take, but trying to time when you're taking them, and then you put a piece on, and you're like, oh, I'm putting it on because I'm gonna go to this spot. And then the game evolves in the next three turns, you're like, now I don't want that spot anymore because now I just saw this happen. So now it's mm -hmm. like, am I gonna pull that off at a different spot, or am I like, do I even need that anymore? Like, there's, yeah. you're trying to think turns ahead, but you can't in, as a worker placement game, and as someone who loves worker placement games, it is one of the most, if not the most unique worker placement game that I, I that I have in my top 50 because of this this gear system. And it's not just a gimmick, and it could have been just no, a gimmick. it really isn't. Yeah. And it's just, yeah, it's so good. This is another one I need to, I need to suggest more often because, or just, or just play, have more games going on Board Game Arena or something. Yeah. Because I played it a lot, but it's just, it, it, or every time I play, I'm like, man, this is a good game. Yeah, it's one that I want yeah. to play a lot more. This was somewhere in my 60s when I did my short list, so it's one that I could also see potentially get in my top 50, but in the past couple of years, I've only played it on Board Game Arena, and I know f like full well that it's because of the gears and the table presence. Like This is a game that is way better in person yeah. than online, so yeah. I want to play it more, and I have to say, I'm always surprised that you like this game as much as you do because of the feeding your workers part that you hate in it's my least. It's, like probably, it's, it's probably one of my least favorite parts of Zulkan, but for some reason, I guess I played Zulkan enough to know how to manage the feeding because you can get those uh, bonus tiles that make it so that you don't have to feed your workers okay, right. or whatever. Um, so you just don't want to have to spend the actions. You yeah. just like spend one or two actions getting the things and you're like, now I don't have to worry about the feeding. Well, in Zulka, I can just be like, my strategy is I'm going to get these tiles so I don't have to feed. In Agricola, I can't get away from feeding, right? And I can't seem to figure out a way to get an engine to like make Fair it enough. easy. Fair so enough. yeah, anyways. Fair enough. <laughs> 
But yeah, so, awesome so, game. Someone should just make a game where the entire game is just how, how efficiently can you feed your workers? I'll never play. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> 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 All right, over to you. Uh, so look, what number was that? Those are 37. 30, yeah, okay. All right, so on to my number 36. Uh, this is one that actually we spoke about. I can't remember if it was earlier in this video or in the 50 to 41. It came up in discussion. Yeah. New to my list, but a game that is not new that I've played. Like I first tried okay. this maybe two and a half years ago or so. And a game that when I did my top 50 last year, I think it was just outside, maybe 54, and I immediately regretted it because I unfairly dismissed the game. That is Can't Stop. Oh, okay. Probably nice. my favorite pusher luck game, uh, I think. I don't think I have any higher on the list. In terms of at least games that are purely pusher luck or that that's right. like the main mechanism at play. Um, and what has made me realize that I like this game this much, but because like, like even when I did the initial rankings, I thought this year, like, okay, is Can't Stop really going to get into the list ahead of these games? And again, we always like, it's really hard to look through that initially kind of dismissive, judgmental lens of like, you're just rolling dice and going up tracks. Like, it's just randomness. And I think about complaints other people have had about the game, and I'm like, is it? And then I go play it online, and again, and I'm just like immediately hooked. I, sometimes I'll have multiple games going on Board Game Arena. I'm very close now to buying my own physical copy because I want to just nice. have a game at home to play with family and stuff. Um, but it's, it's really, really good, and it's one of those truly classic designs. Like, this came out in the 80s designed by Sid Saxon. And what I appreciate so much about this as a push your luck game that I think I've overlooked sometimes is most push your luck games, like something like Quacks of Quedlinburg and like a lot of the, even Ink and Gold or whatever, like these games tend to have a play, a time where you know you're going to eventually bust kind of thing. Right. But in Can't Stop, you don't. Like you could straight up, like uh, if you go online and read about this, there are people who have won Can't Stop on the first turn, turn, turn yeah. because technically you can do it. Obviously it's yeah. a crazy gamble, but that's the, one of the most brilliant things about the game is you can fall behind. I've had games where I'm behind, the other players have, you know, two um, out of three, like, rows at the top or whatever, and I'm at zero, and you just pull some crazy moves or you just take these risks and you push and you make these comeback wins. Um, so the push your luck allows for just, like, these wild swings, but the game is so quick, so easy to teach anyone. Um, and it's just now that I've played it over 100 times, I think, or really close to 100 at least, and I'm still like nowhere near tired of the game. I can play it on board game arena. It's so much quicker, and yet I'm contemplating getting a physical copy. Like I just couldn't deny its brilliance any longer. I don't know if it's always going to be a top 50 game. I think part of that's going to depend on uh, the physical plays over time. If this is something that I end up playing like with my son and my wife at home, and it becomes like a family favorite, yeah. then it could stay in my top 50 forever. But it's just, yeah, it might be one of the most. It might be the simplest or one of the simplest rule sets in my entire top 50, and especially this high up. But I'll never get tired of this game. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll never get tired of it either, and I always, uh, I, I often have games going on Board Game Arena for it. Um, for me, it's I, I will probably always play it in some regard. I'll always enjoy it, but there's parts of it that just, it, it is never a good feeling to me when I've got like, oh, I, I have I have six, seven, and eight, right. and, then, and then I <laughs> and I push and I just bust. Like it's it's never a good feeling. I know that's part of like you're supposed to just kind of laugh it off. That's part of the game. But like even just the tournament we're having now, like I lost the first two games and that happened to me twice. Oh, okay, and, yeah. and and that that is very unsatisfying. Yeah, I will agree. It, and it's unsatisfying in all pusher luck. It's unsatisfying in quacks when it's happened. But for some reason, in quacks when it's happened, it's been funnier to me. Where sometimes it can't stop. It's you know more why just I frustration. Think, you know why? Or maybe maybe I could be wrong about this. I don't yeah. want to tell you why you feel the way yeah. you do. <laughs> um, but I think it's because quacks you always play in person and can't stop. We've only played digitally, yeah, and maybe. I think. Like when you get that bus from the six, seven, eight around the table and everyone laughs out loud, whereas when you're playing against strangers and you're just like, that was my turn, you just like click to the next game on yeah. board game arena, it's a little more <laughs> yeah. deflating, but. Yeah, yeah, but anyways, I, 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 I'm not surprised to see it on your list. Yeah. So. Are you surprised by how high it is? A little bit, I thought it would have been in the 40 to 50 range. Cool, but, I, yeah. I thought so too, and then I just kept realizing, yeah. nope, I like it more than this game, nope, and it just got higher than <laughs> I expected. Next year, number two game of all time. <laughs> no, 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 we'll never be top 10. <laughs> yeah, this can't stop at 36, so onto your number 35, I believe. Really? Or is it 36? No, my mine's 36. Yours 36. Yeah. Sorry. 36. Sorry, was wasn't on the list last year. I played this a, a bunch of times this year. Love it. Most times I played it multiple times in the same sitting. And that is a party game called, kind of a party game called So Clover. Mm, yeah. uh, so Clover is great. I, I honestly love it. If for some reason, it is one of the games that actually gives the most hilarity around the table. And oh, like I wouldn't have expected that on first glance at So Clover. That's not what I would have expected to come out of it. Mm -hmm. But having to figure out what the person is leading you to on their clover and piece the, the little like, you know, square cards together is so much fun. And the fact that you're doing it with other people at the table at, as a, in a cooperative environment 
is I think if this wasn't a co-op game, if this had been like something you had to figure out on your own, I would have liked it a lot less. Mm. Everything, all the joy I've had from it is us sitting around being like, oh, but what if they mean this? And it's like, oh yeah, we're, we're like, we're, like we got three cards, Lena, and we're so confident. And then one person chimes in and they're like, like, you know, they could have meant this. And you're like, why'd you do that? Like, yeah, that's, especially, oh my yeah. God. <laughs> when everyone else is like, yeah, you're right, you're onto something. Yeah. You're like, oh my God, why didn't that person shut their mouth? <laughs> <laughs> the feeling I've had as the person who can't talk and then watch them solve my card yeah. and they have pretty much figured it out and then they just dismantle the whole thing and all I want to do is scream and I can't say anything. Like, it's, it's similar to the code names, but different, yes, right? Yes, yes. It, it's a lo it's just such a fun game and it only plays up to six. Honestly, I wish there was a way. I mean, not that I think it would be like a good game at higher than six, but I just wish I had more opportunities to bring it out in larger groups. I hear you. Uh, like, Even I'll though it would be harder to have a game with that many people cooperating yeah. and trying to figure too like, many hands, but like. But I feel I, like I maybe know. they could have made it go up to like 10, but to have it be teams where it's like each team solving right, their own their, team yeah, or something. Yeah. Like there could have been a way to do it, but regardless, it's just so much fun. It, it It is different, a little bit different every time because of the, the words you get and the way that someone's gonna craft clues for those. The creativity I've seen of people crafting some of these clues is great. Uh, I, I'm honestly gonna be playing this so many more times, especially around the holidays and at work functions and different things like that because it's just such an easy game to, to yeah. teach and everyone has fun when, when we play it. So yeah, that is so Clover 36. First time on the list and I think it'll stick around for a little bit probably. Yeah. Awesome. I, and honestly, I think it's another one of those ones we talk about that kind of transcends age too, that you yeah. can play with kids, adults, whatever. Uh, yeah. yeah, really fun game, not quite in my top 50, but I've, I've only played it once. Not so quite my top 50. No. It's, yeah, <laughs> not yeah, quite, not yeah. quite my tempo. No, yeah. <laughs> really good game though. I, I want to play it a bunch more times. Uh, yeah. It could make my top 50 one day, who knows? Nice. Right. All right, on to my ner number 35. So this has dropped quite a bit and I was very surprised. Uh, I've only played this once since we did our top 50 last year, but it dropped 13 spots, so down from 22 to 35. I, I think you're gonna be a little disappointed by this. Biblios. Wow. This was, I, Damn. Well, I shouldn't say, well yeah, people I'm, I am some spoilers. This was in your top 10 last year, I think. Yeah, I'm, I am surprised because we the session we played recently to me, reminded me how much I loved it. That it kind of, and I won't say more. But anyways, I'm just yeah. Surprised. And here's the thing: is it reminded me, like I remember playing, it being like, "Damn, this is good." But it also might have been one of my least favorite sessions of Biblios mm. because of something that you pointed out in uh, one of our recent videos. I can't remember which one it was, but um, which is the fact that sometimes the auctions at the end or certain turns can be a bit less interesting. Oh, things I don't like about my top ten games. Yeah, that's yeah. what it was exactly. Yeah. So, and and I think you nailed it. That was like per and. The thing that I don't like even more about it is just that like the theme and the artwork and stuff is just a little bit dry and uninteresting. That's what yeah. makes it not really come off the shelf at, as often as it should. Yeah. Um, but it's it, so it has a bit of a range. Like there are games of Biblios I've had where I'm like, this game is brilliant, P like pure genius. And now, especially with this most recent play, um, it just felt like I, after that play, my opinion changed of it just slightly, where I wasn't thinking of it as like a, something that would be in my top 10 or 20 kind of thing anymore, um, or I guess 22 last year, but yeah. still a very good game, one that I probably will still buy a copy of for myself one day, either that or the kind of re-edition, which is um, the King for the King and Me or yeah, whatever, but yeah, I guess I should mention real quick, it's a two-phase game where you are uh, putting cards in a market or keeping them for yourself or like getting cards that other players can take, um, and or these cards go into an auction, and then the second phase of the game, you're using your cards to uh, bid on cards from an auction and there's dice on the board that determine values uh, that people are going to score. So it's a very tight, low scoring uh, game, a lot of kind of mystery, you don't know what people are holding, what's going to be in the auction later. So yeah. lots of stuff, lots of mind games and bluffing and that kind of thing. Really fun game still and uh, I could see it going like bumping back up next year if we have some more good plays of it. But yeah, that one kind of somewhat disappointing play just bumped it slightly down. But again, still like, what, it's probably like in top 10% of games I've played yeah. or whatever, yeah. right? Still, I mean, I'm still, still, still disappointed, awesome. I'm still disappointed, but I'll, I'll have more to say later and I'll make up for his lack yeah. of respect that Fair he's showing here. Amazing game, <laughs> Biblios. <laughs> uh, all right, number 35 for me was 34 last year, so again, only dropped one spot like Zolkin, and that is Everdell. Um, Everdell I still really, really enjoy, um, and I, even though I think I only played it once this last year, um, and it wasn't like it was like a really special session or anything, I just, I really like the way it looks on the table, I really have a great like time playing it and engaging with like the the artwork, the cards, the components, everything. I still really like the gameplay and in, in the, like crafting your little woodland or whatever it's I can't remember what it's called, but the area that you're actually putting the creatures into and how you're acquiring them. I know that if I were to play finally uh, the expansions and especially some of the ones that have been talked about as being like the better expansions, mm -hmm. it might actually even climb a little bit in the same way that like right. you were saying Rise of X could make Dune climb because yeah, yeah. you're just kind of re-exploring the game with, in, under a new lens. 
Um, I, I just really like Everdell. It's, it's a satisfying game to play. I feel like I'm cooling on it, and I might continue to cool on it as, as we go, but it will always be this one that kind of, you know, holds a, a, a special spot for me because I just think it actually is a really solid experience. And I just, I, I, it's another one like Wingspan that I've had a lot of people that I've been surprised by them requesting Everdell when, I, like, they normally don't like worker placement games mm-hmm. or, or don't even know what a worker placement game is or like tableau builders and, and whatever and they're like oh but i played everdell at the cabin with these people or oh i play everdell though like it's, it's, it's a game that's very cozy welcoming feel right yeah. it pulls you in yeah yeah and and it's and it's fun to like pair different animals together it almost oh, are, yeah. that 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 whole thing reminded me that's i remember um the, making the comparison in my head when i would play like fantasy realms and everything where you want there's certain cards to be oh, paired together yes, yeah. it's like you want this character to be with this character and it's going to be more effective and that there's so much that in everdell yeah, i find yeah. that it's been engaging fun mechanics so yeah sure. I, I like everything the components the squishy berries of course yeah the best part uh so yeah, yeah only drops one spot basically around the same spot for me as last year uh, and that is everdell nice i've still only tried it once like when you first got it this was almost three years ago now so i'd love to play it again because I, I had a great time with it mm-hmm. okay uh number 34 on my list this is new to the list uh last year when we did our top 50 it was I think like just a bit outside 55 ish kind of thing. And I, I remember I had only played it once at the time and that's what held it off my list. Since then I've had multiple plays of it. I've probably played it almost 10 times now and I've really like, it's gone over well with the group too every time. Uh, this is high society. Uh, so yeah. this is a very quick sort of 20 minute um, filler auction bidding game by Dr. Reiner Knizia. Uh, it initially came out, I think in the nineties or early two thousands or something like that. And there's been a recent kind of republishing by, by Osprey games with some really nice artwork, um, but it's a very simple game. Uh, the basic idea is everyone starts at the same hand of cards that represent your uh, denominations of money. You know, you have one all through 25. There's a bunch missing though. Like you have a 25,000, a 20,000, like a 15, etc. And you're going to be flipping cards from a common deck that are going to be one at a time. You flip a card and everyone at the table is going to auction that card. But there are good cards and there are bad cards and the auctions work differently. If it's a bad card, the first person to pass takes that card. Uh, and then, but if you're playing, passing, or uh, bidding on good cards, it's the last player left in the round ends up buying the card. Right. Um, basically, once the game and triggers at the end of the game, the before you even see who has the most points left, you compare the leftover money in your hand, and whoever has the least amount of money left is automatically eliminated because the idea, the theme of the game is like you overspent kind of thing. You're you're poor now, so you still have to be part of high society you know you can't spend everything you have to try and get this kind of like prestige so it's got a very cool idea and all your money that you spend is face down so you don't know you know like how much can i afford to spend am i going to be the broke player like what if i have the most points but i overspent like it's very thinky for how simple the rules are and how quick it plays. And every time I've shown it, people are like, oh, I'd love that game. We got to play it again sometime. So, uh, yeah, it's it's not quite, you know, oh, I shouldn't say, I'm not going to spoil about another <laughs> game that fits in a similar spot that's higher yeah. up on my list. But uh, High Society is just a really, really good game and one I hope to play many more times. Nice. It just missed my list, actually. Like, and I, I, if I had played it more, I might have made it. I, I was going to really say, I th- yeah, I think you haven't played it as much <laughs> as me, but uh, yeah. yeah, it's one that we'll have to play again for sure. Solid pick. Uh, all right, my next one, 34, uh, big, another big drop. This is a 16 spot drop from 18 last year to 34, wow. and that is Clank. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Clank, solid game, still really like it. I just am starting to, it's not even about cooling on it. I think I've just, I'm clanked out. I think, I think, I've, just, I think I've just seen a lot of Clank, and I think at this point, the next time I really venture into this is going to be in a different version of Clank. I think it'll be Clank mm. Legacy. I think it'll be like Clank in Space. I think it's going to be time for me to sort of transition over and then see how that version starts to stack up against other games. Right. Because I played so much Clank. Like, I've honestly, it's one of the most played games in my collection, and that's why I like it a lot, but it's just... It's not, I'm never going to recommend it now, it would, unless unless it's about me introducing someone new to it, and I think that that's going to be something that really resonates right. with them. Um, I've just, I've seen a lot of it. So at this point, I think I need to just try a different version, branch out a little bit, but. Is it, a, I think there's a game that's going to be much higher in both of our lists that's sort of the clank killer for you, eh? I can't, maybe. There, there, deck, so, deck building on a board. There, there, there's a game that's higher on my <laughs> list. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. There are some clank, clank. I think clank killers on my on my yeah, list here. Yeah. So yeah, there's a couple. I can already think of two that are killing clank okay. a little bit. Yeah. Slow death. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> slow death. Not very clank. painful. <laughs> yeah. So clank falls to 34 from 18. Yeah. Fun game. I, I've really enjoyed it every time I've played it. But uh, I've only played it with you, and it's been a couple years now. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, fun, fun one. It's fun to explore all the different cards in the deck too, but I, yeah. I kind of, I had the similar feeling when playing it, thinking like once I see all the cards a bunch, I don't know if I'd want to come back and play it a whole bunch. Totally. But it does play out differently every time with it which does. relics people go for and yeah. just a lot of laughs. Yeah, for sure. Okay, this is uh, kind of a big one here. Uh, number 33 on the list. Well, I think it'll make for some good discussion. Number 33 on the list, down six spots from last year's spot of 27, is A Feast for Odin. Oh, shoot. Which, uh, for those of you who might not it watch the channel, falls. might not be familiar. Yeah, last year this was number two on your top 50, I believe. Yep. I don't know where it's going to be yep. this year. I have some guesses. but uh, yeah. So there's a couple reasons for its place. I think uh, my opinion of it hasn't really changed that much. Um, I don't, my, my opinion might be slightly better or slightly worse than it was last time we ranked the game, but yeah. there are some new games that I've played since, or games that I've played more, that have just gone ahead of it. Yeah. And I think, I, I, to be to its credit, like I've played it probably a good 10 times probably in the past year on Board Game Arena, and there's times where I'm like actively seeking out playing it, and I know we have this whole Agricola versus a Feast for Odin thing on the channel. Yeah. For those of you who don't watch the channel, you might not be familiar with that, but we have this kind of like little mini feud. Yeah. And so I think there have been times where I've... Uh, maybe let that comparison color my opinion of A Feast for Odin a little bit, and I always have to rein myself in and be like, no, it's still such an amazing game. Yeah. So I've loved, loved playing it this year. It's one that I will go back and play many times. I might buy my own copy in the future, but I think what's happening now is I'm at a point where I've l lost a bit of the desire to go back and play it until I play the Norwegian. I was just going to say, we need to play with the Norwegians and, that, and see yeah, what that does. And I think that's where I'm at now, is now I'm even hesitant to play it more on Board Game Arena because I don't want my opinion of it to cool even more and then be less yeah. interested in the Norwegians. And I just keep hearing from everyone, like, if you haven't played the Norwegians, you haven't truly played A Feast for Odin yet. So, you know, this is very much just the base game ranking. Yeah. Um, but... Yeah, incredible game, really, really fun. One of the best polyomino games out there for sure. Um, and really gives you just sort of an open space of like, do what you want. There's 61 actions or something like that on the board. It's absolutely wild. Um, but yeah, got to for sure try it. I wish it had a bit more player interaction. It's not my favorite Uwe Rosenberg game. But um, yeah, I'll never say no to a Feast for Odin. Unless someone wants to play with four players. Yeah. I don't <laughs> think I would play with four. But yeah. from solo to three, any any day for sure. No, solid pick. This one just missed my top 50. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have more to say about this one later. <laughs> but you'll uh, continue to find a way to mention it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, number 33 for me it was 24 last year, so it has dropped nine spots, uh, and that is Stellar. Uh, mm. Stellar is, a, it's a stellar game. It's a great game. I'll never stop making that joke. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a great two-player game. I, I love playing it. I haven't suggested as much recently because we just have, it, it's, a, it's a hard, there's so many great two-player games. It's a hard one to We've continue We've had a lot of new ones come in over the last I little know. while. Yeah. Um, but honestly, I think it's, it's, this is, out of all the games on my list, it's one of the most that's a hidden gem. Like, I, mm. not a lot of people have heard of Stellar. I try to talk about it a lot because I like uh, that getting out there more because I think it's such a solid experience. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not that it necessarily even does anything super, super unique. It just does what it does well and having the Actually, uh, part of it is actually really it unique. It is, honestly, But, yeah. like, the, the fact that, that one card gets played to your telescope, one card gets played to your journal, and having to manage how that's going to get triggered is the best part about Stellar, and then having to, like, figure out how to score each officially. And you can never do it quite perfectly. There's always going to be no, some yeah. wasted cards. Like, and that's what, that's what draws you back to play. It's like, you're like, oh, like, now I want to play it again because I know I could have done that better. I wouldn't have done that that way yeah. or whatever. And taking so. cards from the tableau just to deny your opponent because yes. you know that's the exact card they yeah. need, like... Yeah, it's, it's a really, really great game. And if you haven't, if this is the first time you're hearing about it, again, because it is a bit of a hidden gem, I would highly recommend checking it out because it's really inexpensive and it is a lot of bang for your buck for yeah. two players. Literally, the only bad thing about it, <laughs> and one of the only bad things is just how much table space it takes up for two players. Surprisingly, I'm out of table space because yeah. you're, you're, you have to build this telescope thing. You can't usually just like play it easily on a coffee table, which is a, a bit uh, of a yeah. shame. But so I was going to say, a lot of those two player games that do play on coffee tables, this one doesn't. But yeah. But that is a stellar. So from 33, stellar, down from 24 last year. Yeah, for me, this is uh, one that's just a victim of not having played it enough, especially in the past mm -hmm. couple of years. But uh, yeah, it's a really, really good game. One I want to play a lot more. Yep. Okay, uh, number 32 on my list, which stays exactly at 32 from last wow. year. This is the first game that hasn't moved at all. I think so. Yeah. I, have a, I think I have a couple more later on in the list too, that have, that yeah. have done that. But uh, yeah, so sticking right where it was last year is Lost Cities. Um, and you're going to see this. And I think I didn't, uh, comment on it before, but you said something in our 50 to 41 video that was like, I think was perfectly said about g the more you pl have played a game, the more sure you are of where it ranks, right? So even if you don't play it as much or yeah. even if you cool on a little bit, you still know like I had like whatever, a hundred plays of this game that were amazing. And that's one of those things about Lost Cities is yeah. even though 
in some ways I've cooled on it in the sense of like I don't go on board gaming and queue up games and I don't have that I'm not like addicted is a strong word to use for something like this but like yeah. I don't have that hook to like go on board gaming and play it a whole bunch anymore like I once did we've played it so much but even the last time we played or one of the last times again our final game on our uh, our charity live stream we did back in May yeah was really fun and like every time I go back it's a really fun game it's great very tight two player back and forth game very thinky very kind of mathy um, and that whole play a card draw a card is just it's so simple but th the decision space in the game is always agonizing uh, I love the three round structure and how that makes room for comebacks in the final round and changes the approach you take every round there's so much to like about this game. Um, I, I think it's just that, yeah, I've played it so much that I just feel a little bit burnt out on it. But I know that if I don't play it for a while, I'll probably get that itch to play it again. And I think the only reason it's not higher on the list is because playing the physical version with having to shuffle card the deck between rounds and counting up the scoring manually, it just doesn't get to the table ahead of other two-player games. You're going to see I have other two-player games ranked a bit higher, but uh, right. it's still one of the best two-player only games ever designed for sure. Uh, and if you haven't played it, I highly recommend you try it. Yeah, the Lost Cities. Yeah, really good. I'll still have more to say about it later. I won't say anything now, but yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm glad it still ranks highly for you, even though, uh, I mean, of course you would like the possession from the live stream. You crushed me in the live stream. It seemed like no matter what I did in that game, I just could not make yeah. up the points. But, uh, but And yeah. also I hit my second or third or fourth or whatever wind right when I think you were crashing. <laughs> yeah, like That's true. I was doing uh, jumping jacks in the street uh, in, in the rain like 20 minutes before that game to, to get myself pumped up. So. Yeah, no, great game. But, uh, yeah, Lost Cities. Number 32 for me is debuting on the list, uh, nice. and uh, this is a game it's that a debut. Uh, it's a, kind of fitting that you just mentioned Lost Cities and I'm mentioning this game, because that is Enchanted Plumes, which oh, I think is very nice. similar to Lost Cities, yeah. and it's sliding in at very similar nice. uh, spots. So I thought this would make your top 50. I wasn't sure it'd be the yeah, side, but that's, yeah. that's great. No, I, I really, really like Enchanted Plumes for many yeah. of the same reasons I love Lost Cities. Enchanted Plumes in many ways... I think, I don't know how long it would take, but there, it is one of those games that I think could almost replace Lost Cities for me, and not because I think it's a better game, but because I've experienced so much of Lost Cities that naturally something comes in that scratches the same itch, and it, it was a like more colorful package in different ways and stuff, that maybe it just becomes a game that I play more often. Yeah. I, I, one, I, I don't the, know for and sure. the player count going up to five That's or six or whatever, right? I can bring it out in more situations. It's an even smaller box somehow. Um, yeah. It takes a more table space, which is, again, it's kind of like Stellar in that regard, one of the, the negatives, but it's just... Having to not only like the man manage your hand with the colors of plumes that you're trying to collect, but also the fact that your top row of your plume is negative points and everything else is positive points is such an interesting addictive mechanic yeah. of having to say like how much am I willing to sacrifice in the top row of my plume and how big am I going to make my plume before I start gaining those points back and am I going to be able to gain the points back and then me yeah. looking at what you're doing and being like okay but now I know that he's committed that much now what me managing my hand is I don't want to make allow him make up that up so I might hold cards back in the same way right. I would in Lost Cities but the holding cards might backfire exactly like yeah. <laughs> that is, is so good and it's not that it's unique to Enchanted Plumes because Lost Cities already did that but they found a way to do it in a slightly tweaked way that accommodates more players that makes it so that I just want to constantly play Enchanted Plumes and like I said over time because of it being more accessible to more players at the table and because there's things that it does that I actually think it refined on in Lost Cities that I just think it could honestly overtake it one day in terms of which one I'd rather play. It just hasn't yeah. got there yet. Um, but it is, I knew it was going to be on the top 50. I wasn't sure where it was going to slot in. I think this is the, like, I'm really, really happy with where it ended up. I think this is a good mm -hmm. spot for it this year. I'm interested to see like where it'll climb in the future yeah. years. But. I'm so glad that you like uh, made a put, like that you talked about this game on the channel that we got a copy sent to us because this is one that we could have easily missed. Like I think a lot of people have overlooked. Yeah. Um, and don't just like look at it, it's oh a small card game with peacocks whatever like yeah. it's a really really good game I, I think good. my favorite thing about it is the mini push your luck game of like yeah. <laughs> how big do you want to make that plume it's like because Lost Cities has how a, many plumes and you Lost, have? I think Lost Cities has a cap <laughs> yeah. and even other yep. game that it uh, takes from our breed and those games have caps on how much you can score this game doesn't like technically you can you know like uh, anyways and it, ha and it has like the amount of colors that are in the game are change with player count too so right. at yeah, higher yeah. player counts you have more colors of uh, peacock plumes and stuff available so it just yeah, yeah it, it's Every turn is so good <laughs> really solid game I'm glad it's all I'm able to put on this list and I'm interested to see like how it'll climb in the years to come yeah it might have made my top 50 one day I think I only played it once or twice but uh, yeah excellent excellent game yep. okay last one on the list for this video here coming in at number 31 new to the list this is a game that I if I had 
thought I had played the app version of this game before we did our top 50 last year. Mm -hmm. And I was, in my opinion, it was by far one of the most impressive, best designed games I'd played at that point, but I didn't feel right putting it in the top 50 because I'd oh, played I, an I app against is. AI only. Yeah. I still haven't played the physical version, which I think is what's preventing this from going higher on the list, but I've played it on Board Game Arena at least against real opponents. I've played against you and a couple of our friends, people in our Discord. So some of that you know, competition and interactivity and stuff is starting to come through. That is Tigris and Euphrates. So this was uh, when I did my you know, eight Grail games video a while back. This was my number one Grail game. I'm still trying to track down a, a copy. Well, there's a reprint coming apparently next yeah. year, but um, one of the most like mind-blowing designs I've ever played, just the way that it's kind of like represents the rise and fall of civilizations through tiling, uh, where it shifts and these civilizations can grow but then also fall apart. Like it's this very organic map. Um, I've played it maybe about five or six times now. The game has played out like wildly differently every time. Um, there was a few, the first few games, I felt like I wasn't quite grasping the rules, and I know like a lot of people have said that, and I, I still think there's like, I probably haven't even scratched the surface of the strategy that this game has to offer, and the depth, and knowing what is risen to good play. Like, it's that type of game where you could stare at the board for maybe half an hour, an hour, even if you felt like you understood the rules. You could maybe stare for hours, and you might not find even the fifth best move available. Like, there's so many options, because you get two actions on your turn to either, like, place a tile somewhere, there's different types of tiles you have, uh, or you can refresh your hand of tiles from a bag. Um, there's just, you constantly have to be watching what people are doing, and the fact that you can make these comebacks because of the way that there's two different types of conflicts you can have, there's, uh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll stop right there in terms of the way the game works and stuff, but uh, incredible game, but I can already tell that it's one that I'm going to need to play in person to solidify where it stands for me, because you, I think, lose a bit, like, a game that is that interactive, you lose a lot of um, the kind of table talk and the kind of like watching people make these big moves and the reactions around the table, you lose yeah. that playing digitally. Uh, but yeah, it's this might be like a top 10 or top 20 game for me one day because it's just incredible. Yeah, this one I've only played once digitally and I f didn't know the rules well and it was a bad experience, yeah. but I don't blame them on the game. I just, I need to, I need to play the physical version, yeah. sit yeah. down, learn it, play it. And I think I'll appreciate it more. So I feel like I'll have, for sure. I'll have more thoughts on this when I've actually properly experienced it. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. the first couple times I played it, I got absolutely destroyed. Like if you don't know what you're doing, again, you play against experienced players, it's yeah. very punishing. Like the skill ceiling is very high. So yeah, try to play it with people who are similar uh, experience level with the game if you're if you're gonna try it out but yeah that's number 31 uh, new to the list for me Tigris and Euphrates cool uh, number 31 last one for me actually moved up seven spots which, which surprised me because I only played it once this year and it's a game that's been around for a long time and and, it, and nostalgia might be controlling this one a little bit for me but I still am happy with where it ended up and that's Ticket to Ride Europe nice um, I this I've just played I, and to honest be honest I played more of the original Ticket to Ride than this but I kind of just end up compa like I join I join the plays together because Europe is very very similar. It just has like the changes it has. I just I enjoy yeah, like more. the tunnels. Yeah, and stuff. exactly. And obviously the maps are different. Yeah, um, I just I've had so many fond memories of this. It's a gateway game. It's easy to introduce to people, and it always is a satisfying play. It's I think even though this climbed this year, I don't think it's ever gonna. I mean, I shouldn't say that, but it probably won't climb again. If anything, it might just continue to like slingshot a bit or just continue to drop mm -hmm. slowly. Other games are going to pass it, but it reminded me when I played it this year just how much I have enjoyed this game and how much it did contribute to me, like getting into the hobby and, and just enjoying yeah. games in the hobby more. So I think nostalgia is controlling this one a little bit, but it's just it's a really solid game. It's an easy one to introduce to people, and it's for some reason just a really I, I like. I think it was that time we played it at the cabin uh, with four players. That it is just one of those great like relaxing cabin-esque type of experiences where like yes. when you're just having that like really you don't want you don't want to you want to have to be a little bit cutthroat but not like uber cutthroat you can just sort of just sit around the table and have a game of ticket to ride and it just feels satisfying and feels a little bit warm and fuzzy and everything yeah. to it so but it's a game that you can just have conversations about stuff totally unrelated to the game people aren't going to be like hang on sorry i need to really focus yeah like, <laughs> yeah it's it gives you a feeling of playing still like a strategy board game it still takes about an hour and there's yeah. tough decisions to make but it feels kind of casual it's yeah, yeah. I honestly, I think this one was, I think, number like 54 for me, 50, like okay. another one that kind of just, just missed, missed the, li uh, the list, but I think if I play it more, it might make it its way back in in the future, but yeah. yeah. Very good game. That is Ticket to Ride Europe, and that's it. Cool. So yeah, that was our 40 to 31. Uh, let us know if you enjoyed this. Leave, feel free to call, leave a comment below, uh, letting us know how you feel about these games. Uh, and keep an eye out in the next, you know, two, three days or so, four days, uh, we'll have number 30 to 1. Uh, live 30 on to channel. 1. Sorry, 30 to 21. <laughs> sorry, sorry, 30 to 21. <laughs> 
uh, and then the other ones will follow sort of a few days apart. So, and if you missed 50 to 41, you can obviously go back and check that out. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.